continues over into all of Nun Chet as well. So it starts here in, in sentence number 14. They have said, so I'm sort of tempted just to read this off in English to you. In English, let's see, we have it over here. Ready? Yes. He will say, pave, pave, clear the road, remove the obstacle from my people's path. Because this is what God said, the exalted and unlifted one who, by, who abides forever and whose name is holy. I live in holiness, but I am with the low people and the humble to receive, and I receive the spirit of the humble people, and I will revive the heart of the de depressed, sad people. Because I won't be angry with you forever, and I will not be always uh, in wrath. Because yet they, I remember that I made their souls. Here, let's let's read it from here, all right? This because it's pretty beautiful. Solo derech shat ve'itak avashav ruach hanemizin. Because I will not be with, angry with them always, and I will always not be uh, at, at odds with the Jewish people because. I have enveloped their spirits. This is with the Tanya, the second Tanya. And I have made their souls. <clears throat> In the, they, they did sins and I, I jumped and I punished them. I concealed myself and I got angry. <clears throat> and they continued to go in not such a good way in the ways of their heart. I saw the ways of the Jews and I have healed them. I will leave them alone and I will comfort them and in their mourning. Peace, peace for the far and near, says Hashem. Shalom, shalom, and I will heal them. But the wicked will be driven, driven like the sea that cannot rest and whose waters are full of muck and mud. There is no peace for the evil ones, says God. Second. Call out very loud. Don't qui be quiet. <clears throat> like a chauffeur, like a chauffeur, raise your voice. Tell my people you have sinned. To the base Yaakov, you have transgressed. You are looking for me. You have transgressed. They pretend to seek me every day. They say they want to know my ways, like they are righteous and they haven't gotten forsaken me. They look about my laws of justice as though they are desiring to be near me, says God. And they say, listen, we fasted. Why didn't you appear? Why didn't you reply? We, we afflicted our souls. What, didn't you know God? Says God, listen, I know what you're doing. On your fast day, all you're looking for is personal gain and you extort all your debts. This is what they say. Now the Trump said that the Jews are only selfish. They make up a new thing about them every day. But here we see God himself said it. Look at this. He said, all you're thinking about, God says, is your own self. The only reason you're fasting on this because you want me to give you blessings why you're fasting in order to strike each other with a wicked fist. You don't fast like you're supposed to be to make your hurt voice heard to me. Can it be that what's a, a fast when people just, all they do is they don't eat? That, that's, you're doing a diet. Can that be just bowing your head down like a bull rush, like a, you know, like a, what was it? A, uh, what was it called? A, well, a reed in the river just because you're bound, bound over and you put sackcloth on your, this is called a fast day? This is the fast I want, to help the evil people undo the bounds of injustice. Let the oppressed people go free. Help the downtrodden. Stop twisty or twisted ways. You should give bread to the hungry people. Help the poor people in your house. When you see someone's naked, put clothes on him. Don't hide yourself from your own brother. Then your light will break out like dawn and your healing will, see, will speedily sprout. Your righteous deeds will precede you and the glory of Hashem will gather you in. Then you call me 
and I will respond. You will cry out and God will say, here I am. If you remove your finger pointing and your evil speech, don't blame other people. Tasir mitochem motab, take the, 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 what do you say, the splinter out of your own eyes. Don't point fingers at other people. Then you will take out, yes, Then your light will shine even in the darkness and your deepest gloom will be like the noon. It will shine in the darkness your light and it will be like noon. And then God will guide you. He will satisfy you even in the times that everyone else is in a famine. He will satisfy the essence of your soul. And you will be like a well-watered garden and a spring of water whose, uh, of, whose uh, like a spring whose waters never fail. Ancient ruins will be rebuilt. And then he says this Pasuk that we say in the fast days, if you hold yourself back from doing any sins on Shabbos and you do what I want to on the holy day, you call the Shabbos a pleasing day, holy to God, and you give honor to the Shabbat with all of your ways, and don't do what you want, do what I want, then you will get pleasure on God himself. And God will put you on the highest places of the world, and he will give you the portion of Jacob, your father. This is a portion with this not unlimited, because this, the mouth of God has spoken. Uh, pretty beautiful. That's the morning. <clears throat> Torah reading and the half Torah reading. What about the afternoon in Mincha? Well, the afternoon in Mincha just continues where the morning reading left off. But listen to this. It's pretty, pretty severe. Listen to this. One second. God spoke to Moshe Lord, speak to Aaron and his sons and say, this is the word that God commanded saying, every person from the Jewish people that set, slaughters an ox or a sheep or a goat and, or in his camp, and he doesn't bring it to the holy temple, see the sacrifice, and he doesn't bring it to the holy temple to make a sacrifice for God, then that person will be considered to be guilty. In other words, don't make sacrifices. You can eat. You want to eat meat, eat meat. But if you decide you want to make a sacrifice, you can't make it in your backyard anymore. It used to be that you could make what's called a boma. As soon as the temple was built, you couldn't do it. That person will be punishable by death. So that the Jewish people should bring all their sacrifices that they made, <clears throat> instead of doing it in the field, they bring them to God, to the oil moed, to the coin, to the temple, to the coin, and he'll make sacrifices. The coin will, sp the blood, and etc. Okay. And here we go. On them, you should say. <clears throat> one second. Excuse me, please. Excuse me, please. Okay, I'm sorry, but I started off in the wrong place. That's what I thought. Yep, started off in the wrong place. We skip this. We don't start here. We don't say this here. Sorry. Skip. We skip this and we read the next one. Okay. It's the end of this. So it's the end of this. One second, here. Here it is, here. Yes, yes, here. We skip this little part. This part we skip and we start here. 
God spoke to Moshe, say, Dabar al Israel, and say to them, I am God, your God. Like the, what they did in Egypt, what they did in Egypt, you shouldn't do. Okay, here. Speak to the Jewish people and say, I am God, your God. Like they did in Egypt, don't do. Here's this, from this we learn that what the Egyptians did and the Canaanim, they were the most licentious and, how do you want to call it? Uh, there's a word for it. What is it called? Um, perverted. There's a better word. Perverted of all the nations. And the place where the Jews were, they were the, that was the worst of all them. Therefore, don't do it. <clears throat> these, these nations that the Jews conquered, they were the most decadent oh, of all of the nations. And now we're going to have this whole list of sexual crimes that you shouldn't do. This is what we read in the, in the holiest, holiest moments of Yom Kippur. My laws you should do and my statutes you should go. I am God, your God. You should observe my laws and my statutes to go for them. And the I am Hashem. Here we go. <clears throat> Every person should not have any relations with his immediate family. For instance, the nakedness, the nakedness of your father, so that means your father's wife, even if your father had a, several wives, not your mother, your father's wife and the, your mother, you should not reveal. It's your mother. Don't reveal her nakedness. The nakedness of your father's wife. Don't reveal. We already said that. Then we says no. This is talking about even after your father passes away. Your father married another woman. Your mother, well, they got divorced. Your father married another. You're not allowed to have relations with this other woman even after your father passes away. The nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father or the daughter of your mother, whether she is, <clears throat> whether your father is alive or he's not alive, do not reveal their nakedness. The nakedness of your granddaughter, Bas Bincha, your granddaughter, even if she is born because your grandson, your son had just relations with some lady. Nevertheless, you're not allowed to have relations with her. From, from your regular granddaughter, from your wife, we learn from another place. We'll see. The nakedness of the daughter of your father's wife, whether she's born to your father, whether your father is alive or not, you're not allowed to have relations to her. <clears throat> okay. The nakedness of the your aunt, the 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 sister of your father, you should not reveal. The nakedness of your aunt from your mother's side, also you can should not reveal. The nakedness of the brother. In other words, what is it? When the nakedness of the brother, of course, you can't have relations with the male. We'll talk about this in a moment. You shouldn't reveal, namely what? Namely what? His wife, the wife of your father's brother. It was your uncle. Your uncle's wife, you're not allowed to have relations with her, even after your uncle passes away. The nakedness of your. <clears throat> Uh, your your son's wife, the nakedness of your son's wife, even after he's died, you're not allowed to have relations with her. 
the nakedness of your the wife of your brother right that your brother's wife do not have relations the nakedness of a woman and her daughter you can't marry a woman or and her daughter at the same time etc okay the nakedness a woman you cannot take a woman with her sister I said a woman and her and her daughter also a woman and her sister you can't marry at the same time call it sorrow a woman and when she's in nida in her time of menstruation you're not allowed to have relations with her to a the the wife of your friend you cannot get because when so a married woman uh, to don't give your children to this idolatry called molech molech it says it's a certain type of idolatry that they would make two fires and they would pass the child between the fires and say now he is dedicated to molech don't do that To have a, 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 a male, a male cannot have relations with a man like he has with a woman. This is, this is called an abomination. Later on also, the next part it also talks about Kadoshim. It talks about also the prohibition of homosexuality. Can't have relations with an animal. Um, also, a man cannot have and a woman cannot have relations with a male animal. Don't be don't defile yourself all these because of all these, the non-Jews that were there, they got kicked out of the land. They tried to make the land impure and I spit them all out. Spit them out of the Tokyo. The, the land itself spit them all out. You have to do my laws and don't do any of these disgusting things, these uh, perversions that I've talked about here because all these perversions and decadence, decadent things, the people that lived here before you did, and they defiled the were, were the land and they got spit out, the land spit them out. Don't you do it and get spit out by the land. Just like the previous non, previous people spit them out. Because all these, what all these people did, they all got cut off from the people. I mean, it's true that nowadays they do it even more, but I think Nowadays, people are doing it with, from ignorance. They simply don't know. And it just, I mean, it's just terrible that the, the educational system and the, the, the media, television, they encourage this. They encourage it in Israel. I'm just really astounded. <clears throat> ah, it's really encouraged. I, I saw even the beginnings of a couple of uh, of uh, television programs. I was outside, I was waiting, and just I couldn't really, couldn't believe it, you know, in the land of Israel. I mean, I know, of course, I know these things exist. And, uh, and I wasn't born yesterday, you know. I mean, went to university, and I know that, you know, there are such things, but it was a thing, you know. It was a side thing. And now in America, it's very, you know, it's encouraged. And it is. It's a thing that there's, you know, what's wrong with it? The only thing really wrong with it is that for some reason God says you shouldn't do it in the Torah? You know, but if you haven't got the Torah, I don't, I, I don't, don't think there's any logical reason to say it's forbidden. Let everybody do what they want to. What's, what's the point? You know. Okay, the Rebbe has a letter where he explains that homosexuality, that it's it's against life because they don't want to have any children. So therefore, it's against the family because they don't have any family, and therefore it's against society. There's no family. Family is the basis of society. And not only it brings all sorts of weird diseases and everything, those are all, you know, logical reasons. But the main reason, I mean, is that God doesn't like, I guess that's for me anyway, the main reason, that God doesn't want us to do it. So but nowadays in the land of Israel, even though it's rampant, and they're there, but people simply don't know. They simply don't have any idea. They don't know what the Torah is. They don't know what God is. They don't think there is such a thing. That's that's where they're taught in the public schools. I don't know, maybe it's getting different. I don't think so. It certainly will get different. 
you have to do my 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 mitzvahs and don't do all the disgusting things that the Jew that the non-Jews did before you and they will got they all got spit out I am God your God and that's it that's the end and then the Haftorah is the story of Jonah have you ever read the story of Jonah anyway I would advise you to do it I don't think we can do it now I don't think we should do it now it's not that important you can look up in the book of Jonah it's one of the books of the prophets and amazingly enough it doesn't really have any prophecy there there's no prophecy it doesn't really say any prophecy the story is that God tells Jonah that he wants him to uh, go and prophesy to the non-Jews it's four chapters wants the trapper says they're very short not that long I can read it to in English if you want came the word of God to Jonah the son of Amita and he said go to the city of Nineveh and uh, tell them to do repent because their wickedness wickedness has come before me but Jonah said I'm getting out of here explains Jonah was afraid that the non-Jews would repent and that it would really make it look bad for the Jews because he has been prophesizing to the Jews and nobody listens to him so he says I'm getting out of here so he says he goes down to Jaffa finds a, sh a ship that's going to a place called Tarshish paid the fare got on it and all of a sudden in the middle of the sea there's this big storm and it's breaking the ship and everything all the, sa the sailors are all afraid and everyone has their little god this one's praying to a, a, a dog and a cat and the waves and the wind they cast their, their, everything that's on the ship they threw it off right to keep the ship light a little bit but Jonah went down and he went down and then he fell asleep and the ship's master comes in and says what are you doing how can you sleep don't you realize what's going on I understand you have this God and you you told us you have a God that controls the heavens and the earth do me a favor we're all calling out to our gods it's not working call out you got nothing to lose so he said eh. so he said let's throw lots and decide who is the fault of this whole business it was a it was a clear day all of a sudden comes this up a terrible storm so they cast lot, lots I guess they picked the number whatever it is and it fell out on Jonah Jonah and they said what's going on who are you and he said I'm a Jew and I fear God the God of the heavens he made the sea made the land and it's all because of me everybody got scared and they say what in the world have you done everybody knew that he was trying to get away from Israel because in Israel there was prophecy so he said okay listen I'm gonna tell you what's going on I'm trying to run away from God I don't want to prophesize they said okay listen tell us what we can do we're all gonna die because of you he said throw me into the river throw me into the sea it's because of me that there's this <clears throat> and they said no let's try maybe we can go back to the land they took out rush oars they took down the masts they shot didn't work the sea was getting worse and worse and they yelled out and they said God listen uh, they're now they're calling out to his God right they said let us not all die because of Yonah I innocent blood you know we don't want to throw him over for no reason so he said okay so they lifted him up threw him into the sea and immediately the sea stopped all of a sudden every guy what got afraid they took off one of the animals they made sacrifices to God and meanwhile Yonah did not stay in wallowing around in the sea very long a big fish came along and swallowed him and he was inside of the fish for three days the Rebbe used to say this Haftorah every year the Rebbe used to say this Haftorah every year every year he would say the Haftorah and when I saw him anyway I saw him say it he would cry I never saw anything like it it was scary to look at his face his face become it was like it was like it was made from putty it just became really wide in his mouth Woo. anyways inside of the fish for three days and he prayed and he said like this I called out my distress to God and he answered me from the belly of the grave I called out God you heard my voice you threw me into the depths of the sea the river surrounded me all of your waves passed over me 
And I said, I was driven away from you, God, but I hope I will again go gaze back in your holy temple. The waters encompassed me to my soul. The deep swirled around me. The reeds were tangled above my head. I descended to the bases of the mountains. The earth was closed in front of me, but you lifted me up from the pit, God. When my soul was weak, I remembered Hashem. I prayed to you, to your holy temple. And while other people have all sorts of false vanities and they forsake doing kindness to others, I called out to you, God, with a voice of thanksgiving. I will make sacrifices to you. In any case, all of a sudden, Hashem said to the fish, spit them out. The word of Hashem came to Jonah the second time. There's Jonah, and he, sp he spit out on the dry land. And somebody told me that, that I read somebody that this really happened to somebody. I'm not not this story. Of course, it really happened. But there's there's a, a record of someone that actually lived in a fish for a whale for days. I don't know. Any case. So God is saying to Jonah, "Go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out and proclaim." So Jonah went to Nineveh, and Nineveh was a tremendous city that you had to walk for three days or ride on it, whatever. Three days. Jonah went into the city, Jonah went into the city one day right in the middle and he said, okay, everybody, 40 days more and this whole city is going to be turned over. The people of Nineveh, they believed in God, so they, they proclaimed the fast, they put on sackcloth and the, the big people, the small people, the, even the king got off of his throne, took off his robe, put it, the, covered himself with sackcloth, sat on ashes, and said, this day is a fast day. Man, animal, sheep should not taste anything. Not, don't even drink water. Everyone should cover themselves with sackcloth, call out to God, turn from your evil ways, stop doing robbery. Anyone who knows he's done something bad should repent, and God will forgive us. He'll turn away from our wrath, and God forgave them. He saw their deeds. It says not, not that he saw their, their words, but he saw their deeds. He saw that they really repented from their evil ways. God relented, and he said, that's it. I'm not going to destroy the city. This really drove Jonah crazy. He said to Hashem, please, listen, I, this, is the why I didn't, this is the reason I didn't want to come here. Because of this, I ran away. I know that you're gracious, and you're abandoned, and you don't do want to do it. So God, do me a favor. Kill me. I, I can't stand to see this happening to the Jewish people. These non-Jews, terrible sinners, decadent people, they're all repenting, and the Jews want no part of it. Your people, they won't listen to me. Do me a favor, kill me. Find somebody else. And God said, it makes you feel so bad. So Yonah left the city, he sat at the, he made himself a little booth, and he sat in the shade, and he wanted to see what was going to happen in the city. Maybe God will destroy it. Who knows? So God, all of a sudden, he's sitting in this booth, and the sun is beating down on his head. And so God made this sort of tree or bush or something that rose above his head and made a shade over his head to give him a little bit of respite from the sun. And Jonah was happy. And then all of a sudden, God sent a worm, and it ate up this little tree, so that it all withered up. Then he really sent down the sun and a terrible wind that beat down on Jonah's head and he felt faint and he said, okay, God, like I said before, do me a favor, kill me. And God said, what are you grieved about? Because I, I, I just destroyed this tree that was over your head. When the tree was there, you were happy. God said, you had pity on this tree, which you didn't build it, you didn't make it. It just lived for one night and it was dead after that. I shouldn't take pity on a whole entire city of Nineveh in which there's more than 120,000 people and they don't know the right hand from their left hand and there's also many animals. End of the story. That's the end of the book of Jonah. This is what we read on Yom Kippur. All right, my friends, let's let's because we always